Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's start our review from the front lines because situation changes with every day. So as you can see the Kharkiv Oblast is different. The red color appeared out there. It means that Russia occupied several of the settlements and they are moving forward. Also Russia does kind of the strange and illogical actions in the place. Well, I'm gonna tell you about it very soon. Now let's go to the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today. As you can see, gray area expands gradually. Basically, we have two of more or less independent attack areas and Russia concentrated, no, not the small groups. They advance with major force and we have the proof for that. The information was presented by the Deep State military map source and they rely on the drone images from the front lines and there you may see the group of the Russian soldiers. It's not a small group. This image is low quality, but nevertheless, you can see the silhouettes of the Russian soldiers. So, so there are around 100 men at least in this convoy. Plus, we see the confirmation that Russia has started to use many more of the army vehicles, tanks and BMPs. So today's Russian attack is very different compared to what it was yesterday. Yesterday, it was a limited force and today Russia just expands their attack with reinforcements. They tried it yesterday with vehicles, but all of those were destroyed. But today they were way more successful, unfortunately for the Ukrainian side. So we have many more of the proofs published mostly by the Deep State map source. They take it also from the other open sources. Well, the Russian convoys also were cooked today, but not in Kharkiv Oblast, where, well, I can tell you later in this video. But still, it is not a blitzkrieg or something. The movement of the Russian army is relatively slow. Nevertheless, they will try to expand two of those bridge heads trying to get Volchansk under control. It's the biggest settlement in the area. I saw some of the videos today from the place Russia uses lots of the artillery systems, totally demolishing the residential buildings. So Ukraine started the massive evacuation from all of the nearby settlements. Hopefully every civilian will be secured, but sometimes they're willing to stay in their homes. Let's switch to the satellite mode. Well, yesterday I told you if Russia wants to advance advance from Volchansk in the future, in potential future, towards Kharkiv, they need to cross this river obstacle. Today they have this dam with the bridge, but today they destroy this bridge themselves. We even have the video of it, I published it on my Telegram channel, so if you are interested with the constant updates on the situation around Ukraine, please subscribe for my Telegram channel, you may find it in the video description just below. So with this bridge being destroyed, Russia is unable to advance to Kharkiv from that direction. However, still they have this direction for advancement. Plus they offense from the West Bank, so they still have two of the vectors. But here are no any good roads for them to advance fast. This one was more profitable for them. Well, maybe they understood that Ukraine would kaput this bridge to prevent Russians from crossing the river. So Russians did it themselves and the Ukraine is unable to send more reinforcements to that area using the same road. So Ukraine now has to use this road to provide supplies for their army group in this sector. Before it was a shorter distance. Alright, and now let's go to the Eastern Russian bridgehead and here they're very close to Vovchansk. The gray area is less than a kilometer away from the settlement. Vovchansk is also divided by the local river. Russians have to cross it if they want to advance southbound and I think that's their goal. That's why in the future Ukraine will blow up all of those bridges and the roads on their way. In this area the fight is going for two of the villages and there is a tiny road which leads also southbound. Also there is kind of the big forest which is on fire right now from the information I got. There are lots of the wildfires which were caused by shelling. Nevertheless the forest could be a good spot for the Russian infantry to hide their forces. The Western Russian bridgehead here, they took some of the villages under control. The fight is now in going for Gliboke. And there is quite a good road which leads to Kharkiv. So it is the closest way for Russia to reach the Kharkiv city. However, according to opinion of any sort of the analytics, including the Russians one, they are unable to take Kharkiv or encircle the city. For example, the Institute for the Study of War says that Russia needs at least 300,000 soldiers 
to encircle Kharkiv, encircle Kharkiv, not take it under control. To take it under control, they need half a million soldiers. Judging on that, we may predict the further Russian movement. They will try to advance to Kharkiv, taking all of its territory under control. However, they will not go into the city itself because it's well protected. Ukraine now have to send lots of the reinforcements to conquer the Russian attack. It, it means that Ukraine is forced to weaken the east direction. You see how long are those front lines? So Russia attacks on the east now mostly. They also have attacks on the south of Donetsk Oblast, sometimes also in Zaporizhia and very rarely in Kherson. Mostly there is a landing operation of Ukrainian army on the other shore, that's it. Also, there is a fight in Kupan's direction, in Krimina direction, and now a new one, the northern side of the Kharkiv Oblast. And in the future, I predict that Russia might strike also Sumy somewhere. With all of those hotspots, Ukraine have to keep its forces everywhere and disperse them according to the threat. Now we have a new threat in Kharkiv Oblast, so Ukraine will send new reinforcements because if Russia is successful out there, they might feel that Ukraine is weak and take Kharkiv as their main goal, the main attack direction, sending their reinforcements from the ISK, for example. So the threat for Kharkiv Oblast and for Kharkiv city still exists. The problem for Ukraine that we have quite a big border with the Russian Federation and also with Belarus, which is very hard to call an independent state. Now it follows the Russian policy. In this case, Russia might choose any sort of the spot to attack Ukraine again, making our army to split their forces. So what I think might happen tomorrow? Well, according to my information, Russia is concentrating their forces in Shebekina region and they will try to advance to Vovchansk maybe tomorrow or in the coming days, but for sure it will happen. Russians put a new marking on their military vehicles which they used to advance in Kharkiv region. It is a crossed diamond or something like that. Well, kind of the complicated symbol compared to V or Z. Judging on those photos, you may understand that our drone operators already familiar with the new symbols of the Russian army. My friends, just a short break. If you want to support the job that I do on YouTube daily, you may also join my Patreon team with a link in the video description just below or you may scan the QR code available on the screen. Thank you so much for your awesome support. Today our defenders got rid of the Russian attack airplane Sukhoi-25 the man pad was used to target it. The good news are that Ukraine will obtain many more of the man pads from the United States. We're speaking about stingers and missiles for those. The more problems we have with the Russian K-52 attack helicopters, now they use more modern systems and longer range missiles. I told you already about it many times that the range for the Russian air to ground missiles is 15 kilometers now. It is a lot for the attack helicopter, which are flying at the very low altitude above the ground. It's very hard to target that helicopter from this long distance. For this reason, for a very long time, we haven't heard about the Russian attack helicopters caputed. Just many of the Sukhoi 25 attack airplanes. Some of the interesting news are coming from Donetsk city, the occupied city by the Russian Federation since 2014. There was the celebration of the anniversary of the Donetsk People's Republic Foundation. A restaurant, many people were packed around, some of the Russian propaganda TV and the Russian activists. Yeah, here you can see lots of the cars on the parking spot celebrating with the flags. So Hymers decided why not to join them out there. And at least two of the missiles hit their spot. I'm out of clue who was in restaurant by that time. In the best case scenario for Ukraine, those could be some of the DPR officials. But during the day, I haven't heard the news about the loss of some of the DPR officials. Meanwhile, Russia sends more of the soldiers closer to the front lines. For this, they use the transport airplane Illusion 76 and probably they are in lack of the tow trucks because the Russian mobilized soldiers are just pushing the airplane which will deliver them to fight in Ukraine. Well, actually, I know why it happened. I am familiar with Illusion 76. It has kind of the unique nose part with this hum. For this purpose, it also has a unique tow bar. 
which technical crew should take with them if they fly elsewhere. So in this particular flight, there was no such a tow bar in a particular airport or on board of the airplane. That's why the towing of this airplane is simply not possible without this unique tow bar, even if you have a towing truck. Nevertheless, this picture looks funny. Russian soldiers are eagerly trying to start the machine which will deliver them to death. The possible details of the Trump's peace plan for Ukraine have become known. So what's inside that plan? The United States will seek a ceasefire in Ukraine and the start of negotiations. Obviously, it might happen only if Trump becomes the next United States president. And as he said many times, he is really seeking for some sort of the peace deal between Russia and Ukraine. I wonder how he would do it, but let's speak step by step. So United States would officially seek for the peace deal. If Ukraine negotiates or start a negotiation procedure, the United States will continue to send weapons and strengthen its defense. Well, it tells us that if Ukraine doesn't want to negotiate, United States will not continue to send weapons and will not strengthen its defense. As was said in the press before, Trump wants to cut the military support for Ukraine if he becomes the next United States president. I think that it is more than understandable. Ukraine's membership in NATO will be postponed. The only thing which might guarantee the sovereignty of Ukraine in a current condition is a NATO membership, nothing else. Basically, it is the only way to finish the war, to supply everything, every sort of the weaponry, excluding nukes, to Ukraine, then take the territory back and join NATO immediately. Well, there is the other scenario to finish the war, but it only might happen if Russian regime collapses. If Russian regime stays, Ukraine should join NATO in perspective. One more Russia could be offered sanctions relief. Well, actually, a perfect plan for the Russian Federation. There could be a ceasefire in Ukraine as it happened in 2014 till 2022. The sanctions will be lifted, Russia would feed more money into its economy, they will invest more into their army and start the war once again as it already happened before, after the previous peace agreements in Minsk. Yeah, the plan is reliable as the Swiss watches. Next one, Ukraine will be allowed, <laughs> will be allowed to insist on the return of all territories. So Donald Trump thinks that he may allow or disallow for the other state to perform its policy and even fight for its occupied territories. Yeah, we understand that Ukraine depends on the United States, it receives weaponry, but here it is clearly a black male. If you don't want to negotiate, you will not have weapons, but you may bark on Russia asking them to return your territories back. No, it's absolute no-go. The sanctions will be completely lifted only after the signs of a peace agreement that is completely acceptable for Ukraine. The signs of the peace agreement. It was even before, at first negotiations, there was almost a ceasefire. What kind of the signs are definitely needed for Russia? Russia should just leave the Ukrainian territory. It would be a biggest sign. Well, guys, if you want to hear my opinion, Trump is mistaken about Ukraine and Putin. Well, guys, from what I see, the great power of the American establishment and politicians like MAGA or Donald Trump think wrongly about Ukraine. They still think that it is some sort of a question about the power of the Ukrainian land, where some of the people speak Russian, so maybe they should belong to Russia, as Elon Musk says. But this war is not about the argument on the power of territory, no. This war is about the fight of the dictatorship against democracy. And they are unable to see this wider picture. Russia, for now, wants all of Ukraine, not just the part of it. Putin doesn't need Crimea, Putin doesn't need Donbass, this DPR, or even Kharkiv. No, he wants to establish his own regime in Ukraine. With this Russian policy, it's absolutely impossible to negotiate whether Ukraine wants to return all its territory or not. Even if now Ukraine negotiates with Russia, Russia would never stop. Honestly, I would like to see the end of the war just right now. 
Even if Russia for now occupies Ukrainian land, we understand that Ukraine is unable to return it in a military way. We don't have that huge support to fight against the Russian army. But definitely with the peace agreement we may freeze this war and just wait for Russian regime to collapse and after that we may try to return the territory in a diplomatic way. If Russia will be formatted into a democratic state. But I don't believe in that scenario. Russia will use the time and lifting the sanctions as the reason to reinforce their army and attack once again. As I say to you, we already passed this scenario with the Minsk agreement, which were absolutely neglected by the Russian side. They were the side which says the Minsk agreement doesn't work, we go and take Ukrainian territory. In the future they will say the same with the possible Trump's agreements. I understand how it sounds, but it's a difficult situation for Ukraine, definitely. If Ukraine continues the fight with Russia as it is right now, we're gonna lose many more of Ukrainians. And finally, we'll not have enough population to recover from this war. On the other hand, peace agreement, war stops, but it's just for a while. After it, Russia will strike again, but by that time Ukraine wouldn't have enough military support as it receives right now. So it's a very, very difficult situation for Ukraine. The best and the only possible way out, as I see it right now, is to press Russia even more with real sanctions, to provide Ukraine with even more military. All that stuff should work. In that way, Russians could be kicked out from Ukraine. And finally, the Russian regime to collapse. I was tagged with this video a few of the times. It's the short Trump's interview to the Fox News. I think it was held a long time ago in 2022. Well, I could be wrong, but there Trump said what I just told you, that Ukraine needs more weaponry, that the United States and allies should apply real sanctions on the Russian oil sector. He actually said good things. So if I listen to him, I would support Donald Trump in the future elections. But we understand that we shouldn't trust politicians, at least what they say. We should judge their actions. And the action of Donald Trump and MAGA group was to block the military support for the several months, which led to the lack of the supplies of Ukrainian army and the retreatment of Ukrainian army from Avdiivka. Still, Ukraine needs few of the months to recover from that stuff. So what Donald Trump says and what he does are total separate things. By the way, it's not only about Donald Trump, it goes for almost every politician. We should judge their actions only. What I like is the current United States policy. They agreed to transfer three of the Hymers units to Germany and later on those will be sent to Ukraine. So Germany pays for this military support. Thank you, Germany. Thank you, United States of America. A British Defense Ministry has announced a new military package for Ukraine. The record one half a billion pounds will be spent for Ukrainian military support with more of the vehicles, more equipment, Brits, guys from UK, you are awesome. With all of those packages coming, I think that Ukraine is capable to stop the Russian advancement. From Ukrainian officials, we may understand that Ukraine is not really that in lack of the manpower compared to weapons, artillery shells, army vehicles and other stuff. We need those for sure, luckily our allies have a lot this spring. So in July Ukraine will have all of the tools to cope with the Russian attacks. For this reason Russia is using this time window to attack for example Harkiska Oblast. And also take more ground on the east because soon they will be not able to do it. Alright, Russians again tried to attack the Urajana village, it's the southern part of the Donetsk Oblast, and their convoy was absolutely demolished by Ukrainian defenders. So Ukraine keeps control over the territories which it was able to liberate during the last year's counteroffensive operation. Belarus is building a new military facility not that far away from the Ukrainian border. What they want to deploy there are the nuclear missiles which they obtain from the Russian army. They have the Iskander launches for the tactical nukes and also aviation. Russia can't cope with their own aviation bombs. For the last month there were 20 of the drops of the bombs on the Russian territory, quite far behind the front lines. Also, one of the bombs targeted one of the districts of Belgorod. So there could be some of the circumstances if somehow Russia decides to fly with tactical nukes on those airplanes. 
All right, what the heck is this? Is it some sort of the cosplay on tank? Russian tank? What is this? I think that some of the Z supporters are overreacting. Guess about the Eurovision Song Contest, I don't really care. For me personally, it's just a useless waste of funds and I don't see a real contest, the song contest, out there. It's all just worthless show. The good example was done by Romania this year. They didn't participate in this event because they think that they would spend their budget in different way. The budget for Eurovision was rejected by the Romanian television company. And you know, after all, Romania is okay even without Eurovision. Well, maybe the sort of the activity is just not my style. But I think that Ukraine should have followed a Romanian example and spend the money for drones, for example. Because I'm sure that there were millions spent for this contest participation. It is just my personal opinion. Also, it's too much hype with this event. I see those news of Eurovision coming for me from every platform, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Telegram. It shadows the news, which could be more, much more important for now. The only good thing that some of the Ukrainian representatives were wearing free as of style defenders on their shirts, but those words were just covered with a jacket, so it's hard to understand what is written out there. For the average viewer, let's say, who doesn't know the topic. And now, my friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video by doing so, you help me a lot. And as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.